I'd like to begin the class with an exercise where you try to come up with your own definition of leadership. So I want you to think about somebody who you believe exemplifies leadership. Pick somebody that, uh, you know, you can pick somebody that you know personally, but you could also pick uh, somebody famous. Uh, it could be a fictitious person. In the past, people have picked Yoda from Star Wars or uh, Gandalf from uh, Lord of the Rings or uh, other characters from TV shows or movies or uh, books. It's always fun, but you could pick a political leader, you could pick a religious leader, you could pick a, a military leader, you could pick a business leader, uh, you could pick somebody in the realm of sports. Uh, and then ask yourself, what, why did you pick that person? So what is it that about that person that makes them, you think, a good leader or a leader? I've tried to capture I've tried to capture some of the names that uh, were mentioned, and I added, I added a few more to the list uh, to, uh, to, to give us things to consider, right? Including, uh, including some, some, you know, what we might consider evil leaders, like, uh, <laughs> like, like Stalin, Kim Jong-il, Osama bin Laden, Hitler, Che Guevara. You, know, they, you can see it can be subjective. Some people might say, oh, Che Guevara, is he evil or not? You know? uh, depends on how you, you know, de depends on where you stand, right? Um, so uh, I, I, I couldn't remember the name. Was it the, the Munich or the yeah, Bible? The, yeah, the, and and I, 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 didn't, I didn't know who you picked, Daria. Who was, what was the, the one you Oh, the president. So, what was the, um, what what was the name? Andreas. Like 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 that? No. No. C K. C K. Yeah. C K. Okay. So the is it the is he uh uh. uh Right. Um, okay, so it's like a, b a business, a boss of yours or something yeah, like that. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, based on your discussions, what are your definitions? What, which definition of leadership did you come up with? Who, who's willing to go first? You can turn back to the. To face the front. Are you that that afraid? <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, as a group, I think we all um, decided, or like we ha all had similar views on leadership. Uh -huh. Okay. We thought that it was someone that, or a person that exemplifies synergy and that can bring synergy to a group. Someone okay. that um, is positive, happy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm-hmm. Okay. And then, um, when like someone that steps up or steps down. Hmm. So somebody who's uh, positive uh, and who can be a follower mm -hmm. as well as a leader, so who's not uh, directive, overly directive, right? And somebody who can uh, step down and let other people lead sometimes, right? So one person can also have this skill that at leading, uh -huh. even though they are the leader, like they're always going to need okay. other people involved and right. giving Okay, and did you have an example of, uh, I know you had different people you picked, but uh, did you have, can you, are you willing to illustrate your definition with, with one of the leaders you picked? Dum Dumbledore? <laughs> we have, so we had uh, Dumbledore and Tim Cook, right? So. Uh -huh. Example is Tim Cook is a social issues, mm -hmm. uh, which I thought mm -hmm. uh, exemplified uh, mm -hmm. his ability to create change uh, mm -hmm. beyond the corporate environment. Mm -hmm. So he took a risk when there were uh, discrimination laws and mm -hmm. states in the U.S. and mm -hmm. spoke out against them mm -hmm. um, and helped create change to strike down those laws and make workplaces mm -hmm. uh, more fair for workers. Mm -hmm. And, and so how, how, how does that illustrate the definition you gave? Yeah, he's 
creative experience being a social environment by mm-hmm. taking a personal risk mm-hmm. and speaking out against something that he thought was an injustice and that uh-huh. created a strong support group uh-huh. um, that helped push right. the state in direction of striking down the law. Uh-huh. So I understand what you're saying. Uh, I would say what you describe is, says more than just creating synergy. I'm hearing like having a, a wanting to effect change in society yeah. uh, and taking risks. That's a little different than creating synergy, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, it's compatible, it's not necessarily incompatible, but it adds something new, I would say, to the definition. So leadership is about taking risks. Leadership is about uh, being authentic, right? Staying true to your values. And uh, so wi- being willing to take a risk for your values in order to change society including beyond uh, business, you know, like in this case, it's a business person. So, so that, I, you know, that answers the definition for me. Uh, what about Dumbledore? Yeah, or, or what, what uh, were you gonna I was add? I gonna add to that, and also just like someone who always keeps uh, his, follower, his followers like the best interest in mind. Uh-huh, so there's the idea of benevolence, of caring about your followers. Yeah. And you know, that's certainly present in Tim Cook and uh, Dumbledore, right? <laughs> uh, the idea that uh, being a sort of, uh, having the, wel- the, the welfare of your followers in mind, right? Okay, great. Thank you guys for going first. Which group wants to go next? Yeah. Uh-huh. 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 Right. So, so I'm hearing that the personal character of the leader, how they live their life is important. And uh, are they able to walk the talk of what they want other people to do, right? So leading by example. If, you, you know, if you're a military leader and you tell your soldiers, go first to the enemy and you stay behind uh, the lines, uh, that's, you know, that's different than if you go first and say, follow me, you know, into battle, right? So, uh, so there's the leading by example, there's the, uh, the notion of, uh, I'm hearing authenticity or congruence between what you feel inside and, you know, similar to what we heard about, you know, uh, with the other group. Uh, that's important too for you guys. Okay. Um, what about you guys? So the, the word inspiration is important in leadership, right? Inspiring others to act. So uh, having a way to inspire people. Uh, it's, it goes beyond motivation. You could have a boss that somewhat motivates you, but leaders inspire others to, to do things that they might not do otherwise. Right? So that's, 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 that's a big part of your definition. Did you have examples in mind? Like from the leaders you picked? Like, yeah? Like, um, he inspired his men um, to defend the wall when they were being attacked. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so in a way, leading, uh, so I haven't watched, I know that the Game of uh, Thrones is very popular, I haven't seen it, so I, I don't know the story, but uh, I can imagine, so you give an example of where leading by example can be inspiring, right? If you're the first one who shows this is how it's done, I'm taking the risk, you can do it too, you know, that's uh, inspirational, right? Um, okay, cool. So, let's, let's look at this list here that we have and try to uh, be even more specific. So and, uh, as you can tell, I have something up my sleeve here. Uh, <laughs> so I, I want to examine the, let me close this, uh, the leadership of uh, the, the uh, actions of people from this list and uh, try to 
populate this table. Don't, don't worry about the titles, what they mean here, but they're going to allow us to see different perspectives on leadership. So uh, who is willing to pick somebody here out of this list that they feel comfortable talking about? Anybody? Huh? Pope Francis. Okay, so our, our new Pope, Pope Francis. So he's uh, clearly a leader. So what is it about Pope Francis that makes him a leader? And you're welcome, since you, you volunteer, you're welcome to start first, but then the rest of the class can add on to whatever. No, it's okay. I mean, you know, he's pretty well. I mean, he's pretty well known. I mean, it's like he's just a pope right now. I assume, like you know, uh, at least we know a few things about him. So, what is it about Pope Francis that makes him uh, a good leader? Uh huh. So he's, he's humble, and uh, he doesn't want to be above, despite the fact that he has great power, it, he wants to stay humble, yeah. right? Uh, uh, let, me, let me say, like, you know, uh, let, let me try to write things down in different columns. Uh, could you say he's close to uh, his followers in, in these ways? You know, doesn't, doesn't want to be standing out in a separate quarters, you know, like, what else? Yeah. Uh, he's not afraid of change. Okay. Mm -hmm. So he makes drastic changes, maybe even unpopular changes, yeah, exactly. right? And looks like they weren't afraid of change, which is what he talks about. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and could we, you know, he has the courage of following what he believes is right. Yeah. Uh, so um, how would we say that? I guess authentic. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and he also like definitely cares about people. Um, you know, he knows he uh, does the fact that there's a regular priest and that they're Latin priests and still in Rome. Um, so they know he's like a staunch like doing it too. So, right. So th that's an important thing, though. Like he's the pope, right? So he's the designated leader, you know, representative of the church. I mean, that that sort of adds to his leadership, right? I mean, if you're the pope, you know, yeah. <laughs> right? So uh, the title is important, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so what? So what else? What else about Pope Francis makes him a good leader? Yeah. Okay. We want to go in a little bit of depth, you know, here. Yeah. So, um, how would you describe that? So, uh, do, do you feel like it's more difficult? It was more difficult for him to become elected pope yeah. because he didn't come from a, yeah. So. Um, Mm-hmm. Right. So you overcame a kind of bias in favor of maybe Europeans or uh, non-Jesuits, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh-huh. So can we say he's popular of the people and popular, yeah. right? Do you want to put it there or yeah, I guess they put it there. A anybody else wants to add anything about Pope Francis? What makes him a good leader? Did you have more that you wanted to add? I could literally talk about him for hours. <laughs> <laughs> Any anything so uh, do you, can you think of any particular moment 
in his uh, tenure so far that really demonstrated his leadership? Um, like when he first was elected pope, mm -hmm. um, the first thing that he did was to come down with the document mm -hmm. and like he had everyone approved him. Mm -hmm. um, Uh -huh. Right. Uh -huh. So being vulnerable, yeah. they're being vulnerable in, uh, in, in related to authenticity, but also. Um, uh huh. So ask for help and involve followers. Would that sort of capture it? Right, great. Thank you. Uh, let's let's pick somebody else. Anybody else wants to pick somebody from this list? How about uh, Gandhi? One of my favorite leaders, Gandhi. You guys know about Gandhi? <laughs> what what is it that made uh, Gandhi a good leader? Anybody knows the story of Gandhi? Yeah. Yes. Just to have just somebody else uh, 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 talk, did you, did, did you, you also were ready to raise your hand. C can you say a little bit about, can you talk a little bit about Gandhi? So Gandhi, he was a silent. Uh-huh. He made him this book, he made him speak. Uh-huh. Um, what do you mean the silence? Mm -hmm. um, and then, like, express the feelings he had over this time. He, yeah. So, self-reflective, and we also have this notion of humble as well, right? Yes. So, great humility, uh, dressing humbly also, always dressing in, you know, like when people were dressed in regular clothes, he would just wear a loincloth, and sometimes a drape over, right? Uh, what else? Um, he was to die for the people he was so he was he was, he was uh, courageous to the point of self-sacrifice. Mm -hmm. In fact, he did. You know, he was he died uh, assassinated. That, by the way, does that make him even more popular? The, the fact that he was assassinated, he right? Yeah. Uh, so you know, Jesus, you know, Che Guevara. Uh, you know, Martin Luther King, Kennedy, you know, all of those people who were killed in the action, right, are kind of like, that makes them even more of a, you know, symbolic leaders. Yes? So, so he was uh, humble, courageous, and very patient. Okay. Okay. But, but, but let's stick to, um, to Gandhi just for the, the sake of this example. So, so, okay, so, so just a little bit of background. So Gandhi was born in India when India was a colony of England, right? It was the era of colonies. And he uh, trained as a lawyer and, uh, in England, came back, and um, eventually found his way to South Africa where he experienced ap apartheid. As an Indian person, it wasn't clear whether he was black or white or where he was. Uh, so at some point, he finds himself in a train in first class because he's a lawyer and a, uh, you know, uh, local South African uh, condu uh, not condu condu how do you train a uh, controller throws him out telling him you you should be in third class because you're black you know and he refuses and he's beaten beaten down and he then he starts his fight uh, to against apartheid in South Africa at first for the Indian community then against racism in general and then he goes back to India and fights for independence of India and for equality for all races you know that's kind of his story. He has a particular style about himself. He's uh, the one who advocates nonviolence, right? Nonviolence, uh, nonviolent resistance, resistance to uh, oppression. So don't go and take arms and fight the British. Just burn, refuse to. You know, at some point there was the cards that Indians people had to have and burn those and uh, let 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 the British people beat you up and put you in jail. You know, but don't resist violence but don't participate in it. 
So don't participate in an order. So that's one thing. Uh, you refuse, you know, there, there's a lot of stuff, you know, if you look at the American Revolution against the British, you know, there's some similarities. Refusal for, to accept taxing of uh, salt and organizes salt. So the British had wanted to put taxes on salt. Poor people couldn't afford it. Uh, so he led marches of people going to the sea to collect salt, you know, and uh, against the order of the British that it was forbidden that you need to buy it from the system and pay taxes on it. So a number of things like that. Um, but so we see like the character of, uh, of, of um, Gandhi was that he was very, he led by example. So one thing that a, a few people have mentioned, which I'll put here, is leading by example. Uh, but there's the notion of uh, uh, self-sacrifice, humility, uh, being part of the people, and becoming mythical, uh, having a mythical uh, aspect to it. Uh, you could also see adversity, right? Overcoming bias and adversity, right? So in South Africa, uh, apartheid, uh, but also just India being a colony. So. Uh, all of the colonies, all of the colonized people were in a position of uh, adversity. Uh, out of that emerges leadership, right? Um, you could say that he affected tremendous social change in that India became independent, uh, a big part, uh, uh, you know, based on uh, his action, you know, as a result of his actions, how he inspired others. Uh, and also um, racism, the fight against racism in general, like in South Africa, it affected things in South Africa that years later uh, ended the apartheid. Yes? Right. Uh-huh. Right. Now, you know, Gandhi became such a figure that people almost saw him as a saint. Right? People would come and start to believe that he could heal People would bring their babies, their sick babies to him and uh, ask him to put his hands on them and heal them. So he became almost like a figure, uh, a sort of saint, um, saintly figure, right? Uh, okay, so let's pick, maybe let's, let's pick uh, an evil leader. Some, uh, somebody who's like, to just to switch, you know, to switch uh, gears and see if, like, how they compare to good leaders. Anybody wants to pick one of those evil leaders from the list to talk about? Hitler. Hitler, you want to do that? We have two German students here that might be a little uncom uncomfortable, but how do you guys feel about that? Huh? He's, uh, he's Austrian, right? So he's not German. Uh, so, <laughs> so, okay, so, what, so Hitler is, like, you know, considered one of the most, you know, famous villains of the 20th century. Uh, and, you know, uh, there have been many others, you know, at the same time, you know. Uh, but what is it about Hitler? Now, th but let's, let's sort of bypass that idea of evil. Think about what made, he was obviously a leader, and he succeeded at being a leader. So what made him a good leader? What, what, what allowed him to be a leader, Unified successful people. as a leader? Huh? So, so there was a notion of uh, unifying a certain subgroup, at least of the German people, right? So inspire a group of people who were not, who didn't have much hope at the time, right? So let's think back about the, the where, what's happening before Hitler was elected. So first you had the First World War, which was lost by Germany, with immense reparations imposed on them by, you know, France and other countries that won the First World War. So and then you have the crisis of the 30s, which hits everybody, every country, every especially developing nation, industrializing nation. But Germany was hit the hardest by, by it. So you have uh, immense uh, unemployment, misery, uh, people not having enough to eat, right? Uh, and, and Hitler experienced that personally very well. So he, wa he fought during the First World War. He was a uh, victim of mustard gas. Uh, he was blind for six months. Uh, he won a medal of uh, valor for combat during the first, you know, he was Austrian, but he fought, he volunteered to fight with the German. Uh, he was uh, also homeless and uh, eating uh, at the soup kitchen with the poor people as well, so he experienced that as well, right? So that's kind of the situation in Germany. Most people feel like, you know, we, we, it sucks. You know, <laughs> we've lost the First World War. 
we are in, uh, experiencing the, the crisis of the, th the 30s like everybody else, but then there is no relinquishing of the reparations that were imposed on us. So they had to, Germany had to pay a huge amount of their budget out to the, the, you know, the, the other countries you know, that won the war. Uh, so that's kind of the situation. So Hitler comes along, and what's, what's his message? What, what, what does he tell the people? Huh? So that's, th that's part of the story. So, you know, the, the, the Jews are, are kind of responsible for, so there's a, there's a kind of like uh, a, a narrative of who's to blame for this. We are not, we the German people are not to blame. It's kind of like another entity, the Jews, right, that are partially to blame. And other, you know, communists. So the Jews, the communists, uh, and, uh, you know, some, some, uh, some you know, the, the homosexuals, right? Uh, the Tsigans, the, uh, the, you know, the known sort of uh, pure races, you know, which are sort of like, have somehow polluted the country and uh, preventing the, the, you know, the, the true German race from rising uh, and, you know, being, uh, doing their best, right? Also kind of like uh, Southern European countries that won the war, right? So this kind of the narrative of, we are not the losers that's, it seems that we are. It's uh, there's something else that's prevented us from being our best. Right? Has a lot of narrative that's rooted in the the great uh, history of uh, the, you know the uh, the mythology of Germany. Right? So it goes back to myth mythological themes that were uh, sort of like in the air. You know, they were celebrated by music composers, uh, the, you know, uh, by uh, artists of the Romantic era. So, and it was not just, Germany was not alone in celebrating its, like, uh, the, the power of its culture. All European countries were kind of like that, you know. <laughs> they had this patriotic sort of theme, you know. Uh, so, but so he, he, he brings in that and tells a story that we are the elect people who are supposed to be successful. And if we can uh, you know, take our destiny in our hands, we'll be successful one more time. Right? That's not so different than... <laughs> Many countries say, you know, the American dream is kind of like that. The manifest destiny is kind of like that. You know, every country has a sort of like story like that. Um, what else? So, okay, so what else about Hitler made him a good leader? Yes. You said the incredible tension within uh -huh. his followers. So, so he united his followers. So we, we, we talked about that. Uh, what else? I'm sorry, I didn't follow. He was persuasive. He was persuasive, okay. So let's talk a about that. How was he persuasive? How did he per persuade people? What was, what was, uh, what, what is that persuasion? How does that happen? So he was a very good speech maker, right? He was a very good orator. At the time, giving speeches, right? Not only, so when he gave speeches, he was extremely, uh, he was a very good actor, right? He had uh, the uh, body language, you know, like very sort of at the time, very persuasive, very emotional, very commanding, uh, and a whole ceremony around it, right? You have the whole like uniforms, the flags, the defiles, you know, a, a very kind of a dramatic opera of like uh, of politics right that was you know again not happening only in germany it's if fascism was happening in uh, in spain in portugal in uh, in italy as a result of the uh, crisis of the 30s the idea of like order and uh, you know in, in in the face of chaos right so but he was a great orator a kind of a great marketing guy really in a way <laughs> think about you know in a modern terms it's kind of marketing and uh, and uh, uh, design. You know, he, he studied architecture. He understood a little bit about that. He was he was a you know uh, uh, right. So he so th that's an interesting part too, right? So he experienced failure, but he also had uh, an aesthetic sense, right? Definitely had an aesthetic sense. Um, marketing, branding, right? Uh, what else about his communication? What was new? What, what, what's new tool Hitler used? Yes. Uh, 
Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Right. Like, like Pope Francis, right, he was talking to the downtrodden. Uh, we forget that Nazism is national socialism. It was kind of like also about the masses. It was about <laughs> the masses should be sort of like uh, taken care of, and not just the rich people and the sort of like the... So, so there was a sort of like... Um, but I mean, I, I was talking, I was still in the idea of uh, marketing. The, the one thing that new that was uh, used is cinema. Cinema is a tool for propaganda, right? So m new modern, modern communication means were just being invented, radio and uh, cinema. And for the first time, you had, uh, you had the application of propaganda with that. That also happened in Russia. The Russians were also doing that. But Hitler really and his uh, crew did that very well. So um, again, understanding how technology helps propel your message. Later, you know, you, you see years later, Kennedy was the first president in the US that used TV as a tool for propaganda, right? And to great uh, success, because in fact, um, there's very interesting studies. Before that, radio was the main tool, and when you had the Nixon versus Kennedy debates, people who listened to it on the radio thought Nixon had won, right? Because they thought his arguments were better. But when you looked at the TV format, uh, Kennedy's uh, known body, uh, non-verbal uh, body language uh, was uh, much more uh, positive, and so that led him to win. So, yeah, he was, well, he, he was more, yeah, so that was part of, like, he was judged to be, in fact, if you showed the video without uh, the words, people were more attracted to Kennedy, right? And that sort of, like, makes, you know, it's, it influences people. <laughs> uh, so, so anyway, so uh, let's say, like, uh, Marketing, branding, communication tools, right? I mean, in, in the Obama uh, election, uh, social media was used for the first time. So it keeps changing, right? Uh, but those tools are very important. What else about Hitler made him uh, a good leader? Any, anybody knows anything about the personality of Hitler? What was he like as a person? Yes. Uh huh. Really unsure. Huh? And actually okay. Was upset about how he acts, how he um, yeah, is seen by other people. Always like the, the, the fear of being uh, yeah, judged by others. Being well, so in a way, like you, you could, yeah, there was definitely an immense uh, in Hitler uh, aspect of self-hatred, but which 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 transform which was transformed into an immense um, uh, megalomaniacal uh, uh, sort of like uh, desire to to show that me megalomania, right? Um, so the sort of like when you so lack self-confidence that you need to prove to the world that you are, you know, God on earth, you know. That's sort of like a certain type of leadership. But beyond that, you, would you say that Hitler was, uh, in, in a way, was you, could, would you consider him as humble? So it sort of goes against the megalomania. Uh, there's contradicting uh, accounts. People who met him personally would say that he was actually quite charmingly humble. Uh, not at all like the type of guy who always talks over everybody else, you know. Uh, you look at, you know, talk to his personal secretaries, the people who work with him closely. They said he was very, always very friendly, always very low-key. Uh, he was a vegetarian. Uh, <laughs> he loved dogs and petted them, was very friendly with animals, you know. Uh, he, uh, he was kind of friendly to little kids. Uh, you know, kind of like uh, the, the Queen of England who might come and say, hi, the little kid, you know, like, uh, but he was, uh, so, you know, he was courageous and self-sacrificing. Uh, he fought violently during the First World War. He uh, tried to unify people with multiple coups and was put in jail several times and uh, continued to persevere, you know, in his route. Was he, would you say he was authentic? Was Hitler authentic? 
He was, a, I mean, he was authentic in the sense that he said what he really believed, right? He didn't hide what he thought. He wrote a book about it. He never hid his true beliefs, you know? So he, I would say he was authentic. Um, vulnerable, probably not. Uh, Self-reflective, probably not. <laughs> uh, patient, probably not. Um, did he overcome adversity? Definitely, right? Uh, did he have a popular, you know, a, a powerful title? Definitely. I mean, he appointed himself the Führer, you know, the absolute ruler, uh, gave himself absolute powers. Um, Okay, so let's stop with Hitler. Let's, uh, let's move on to another leader. Let's, let's pick, uh, let's see. Who wants to pick somebody else on this list? One more leader. How about Gandalf? General Patton. Oh, okay. So he's a famous uh, American general from the Second World War. That's an interesting one, actually, Patton. So Patton uh, deviates a little bit from the, what we have here. So Patton was known to be an extremely tough authoritarian general, but one who won many battles and saved the men of many lives by be being one of the kind of the heroes, the, American, the hero generals of the American side of the Second World War. So he... Um, he was uh, a stickler with rules. When American soldiers would wear their helmets unstrapped, you know, cool style, you know, like offhand, uh, he insisted that everybody needed to be buttoned up uh, up to the, their neck, that they should wear their, their strap on, that they should have all of the, uh, and, and that really saved a lot of men's lives because uh, being offhand with the uniform was uh, creating a lot of risks. So that's one thing, but people, you know, He's, he was not very popular with his, uh, the men under his order because of how uptight he was. Uh, he was known to be extremely uh, tough, uh, he, uh, but also courageous. So he was, he's the type of guy who would stand on the battlefield with, you know, like things being bullets left and right and say, hey, we're now marching there, you know, like, uh, and it's, uh, it's uh, quite amazing. It's it acquired almost a hero status where he just never got wounded, you know. Uh, but I think at some point he broke, uh, in a battle, he broke his foot or his, uh, his, uh, something in his uh, leg, and he continued to uh, put just, you know, strapped him in his boots and made it uh, tighter and continued leading his man, you know, uh, on his jeep, you know. So but he was extremely courageous, leading men uh, by example, uh, and expecting absolute uh, co courage and devotion from his men. So uh, at some point uh, he found a, a soldier who was in a, the hospital and uh, had PTSD. Of course, PTSD, you know, post-traumatic stress disorder, uh, did not exist as a diagnosis at the time. Uh, so he uh, asked the man, where are you wounded? And the guy was just shell-shocked, but he couldn't answer. And so he slapped him and said, you're a coward. Just go back to the lines. You know? uh, so that's kind of like the type of man he was. So uh, very tough, very demanding, uh, but considered a hero of the Second World War, right? Um, I wanted to just go uh, with Gandalf, uh, another one of my favorite leaders, uh, who has not seen Lord of the Rings or not read. Uh, you, you guys have never seen or not heard of it? Okay, so you might have a little bit of a, uh, so, so, so who wants to explain who Gandalf is? So, so Gandalf, Gandalf is a magician, right? He's a magician. He's one of the main, ca main characters of Lord of the Rings. He, uh, so obviously he has magical powers, right? Uh, and he's sort of leading, one of the leaders of the fight against uh, the, uh, uh, what is it called? The, uh, yeah, the dark, the dark side of, uh, <laughs> uh, so, so how, what would you say about Gandalf? What makes Gandalf a good leader? So he's so he has wisdom, right? He's wise. Yes. What else? He's he's self-sacrificing. He's willing to. 
yeah, he, he's willing to risk his life, and he, at some point he does die and come back. Th there's a lot of comparison. People have, uh, some people see a comparison between Jesus and Gandalf, the story. Of, so he comes back from the dead as well, you know, continues to advise the people as, uh, after death. But so he's, uh, so he's uh, wise, he, he's self-sacrificing, and he comes back, right? So he overcomes death, right? Uh, yes? Uh huh. Right. No, but I mean, he's he's able to realize that he's not perfect, yes. and to ask for help from the appropriate person. Uh, so the the um, Frodo to carry the ring. Right. What else? So he never gives up. So he's uh, let's see, uh, relentless. Um, has grit, right? Uh, may always maintains hope. And I see that you can see some of the stuff Okay. We say that you know, he's a magician, right? That helps, right, to be a leader. You know, he can summon, uh, <laughs> you know, he can summon magic to sort of like help the people. The, you know, does it? He's a, what about his appearance? Does that help? The fact that he's super tall with a very long white beard and you know, and uh, sort of like a, a you know, big big cane or right? So he looks the part of the magician sort of leader. Right. Uh, let's put the looks here. Looks the part. Okay. Anything else? Well, we have a good list here. So, essentially, what we have here is four different perspectives on leadership. So I want to go over those. I'll go back to to this maybe to, to the table later. So uh, 